We got a lot to talk about. Sit back, relax, and enjoy. I'm gonna do my best to actually describe to you what I have on my bench and how I'm doing all the controls and what's happening right now. Stick around. My name is Russ, rwgresearch.com. Let's have some fun. Oh man, what's up everybody? So as I said, my name's Russ and I'm gonna show you today what the heck's what the heck's going on, what the heck's I'm doing. Anyway, nobody knows very odds going on uh, in the world today, but um, yeah, so this video is gonna be about the control circuitry and where I'm at right now. So I've actually managed to build a program that functions pretty well. I do have some things to do, but I think I have enough together and the electronics and the software and everything wired that I can actually test something today. And what you just saw was me rotating the knob here and actually electronically controlling the motor over there. So that's what I'm gonna show you today, how I'm doing that electronically, and then I'm gonna show you how I'm gonna do it in the software. And yeah, interestingly enough, I've made a, a mode called wifey mode, which only allows the bike to go very slow, which is actually quite funny to me. And it also ramps up very slow. And this way, my wife can actually ride this without being terrified because it'll only go and that's it. That's all the faster. Then I can put it back in rust mode and it'll go Foom. Anyway, let's get started. Hang around for a while. This is probably going to be a long video. Just sit back. I'll try to talk through it slowly and hopefully actually teach you something instead of just going on and on and on about my thoughts. So let's try that. All right, so the very first thing we have to do is take a quick look at the original Zero Motorcycle control box. So this is it. It has a rail-to-rail -rail op amp right here that's being driven from a microcontroller, and that op amp is actually driving the output going to the motor um, itself. And the motor controller, I should say the motor controller itself, the motor controller needs a zero to five K resistance input. And what I found out is the voltage going to the controller is right around zero to three volts. That's what it really needs. Now it does actually need a resistance of some kind. So I had to trick it to do a few things. What they managed to do here is build an op amp circuit. So I've reverse engineered this op amp circuit the best I could. This is a rail to rail op amp. Basically what that means, if you want to see the number, Basically what that means is that it'll go, uh, the, the, the output of this thing will drive maximum to minimum, all right, all the way out to zero volts. So if it's running at 3.3 volts, it will operate on the, on the output side at 3.3 volts. That's not always the case. A lot of op amps, I guess, apparently, I'm not 100% sure about this, but apparently they don't drive themselves all the way from max to min. So because the supply voltage on this is 3.3 volts, they wanted to drive it from rail to rail. Now, uh, in the what I'm showing you today is a little bit different, but that's how they did it, and it works. Now, they don't have a resistor across the output um, going to the actual controller, but I do. So, here's the op amp, okay, pins three, uh, two and three, seven is power, six is out. So that's your one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. This is the op amp chip. So here you've got your throttle, so throttle one, throttle two. You've got a capacitor across the output, um, I'm guessing to smooth the output. Then you also have a set of resistors. Now this is the one I told you in the last video that was busted. I tried to fix this and I repaired it, but the op amp must be bad because it does not, does not do right. Also I've added this resistor I found in the circuit while troubleshooting some stuff. So the op amp is bad, so I can't actually use the one on the board. That's okay, not a real big deal. But this is um, this is the circuit, so it's just a uh, an op amp feedback loop circuit. I still don't really know if this is current uh, sort of a current source output or a current or a voltage source output, but I think it's a current because the actual circuit needs some resistance in order for the motor controller to be happy. And so this op amp is a little different than the one I'm using that I just showed you in this beginning portion of this video. But this is how they had it. Now. Um, this is 150 ohms question mark. That's just all the stuff across the power rails, I presume, is what I was measuring when I was trying to measure that. Everything else, I've tried to closely match these values with what I got on hand, and uh, 
I've done exactly that. So that's what I've done on this circuit. So I'm using, okay, an LM324N. This will run all the way down to 3 volts up to I think around 16. Um, what I found is I have to drive it around 5 in order to get my 3 volts output uh, to work correctly. Now, interestingly, while I did get this circuit to re-energize and actually um, power on and do a few things, what I actually was able to do is even though we broke the output, I can actually measure right here. I can measure the output of this integrated circuit. So we can actually do some interesting tests if we want to find out actually what the output really is, what the ramp curve looks like and all that kind of fun stuff. Uh, if you want to see that, let me know. I'll make a video on it. But for now, I don't I don't I do not have that. But what I realized is this output is probably an analog output because it only goes up to about 1.8 volts. Now that could be a circuitry design or that could be actually the fact that the output here only runs an analog output only runs up to 1.8 and that actually is true for the beagle bone it's a 1.8 volt output so they're scaling from 0 to 1.8 um, across this capacitor okay so you've got your MCU you've got a 2.4 K and then you've got a capacitor from ground to your input which is your positive on your op amp and so what they're doing is I think they're using this to kind of smooth things out if it was pulse width modulated which I need to check now that I have better access to things I can check if it's pulse width modulated output and this kind of helps smooth that out and as the output comes out of the op amp it also helps smooth it out here I'm not sure if that's the case though I really think that might be true analog so we need to we need to do some tests but it's not in this video so you've got your MCU running your positive and then you've got this um, resistive network going to ground in the in the middle of this resistive network you're actually feeding back the positive on your op amp so you have you have a feedback loop control right there and you're actually using that as a gain input so um, yeah that's the circuit I used for reference okay now because the op amp on here was broke I found one and that brings us over to here so the point of showing you that again was because the output there is a 1.8 volt which in a minute you'll see it's kind of interesting that that's the case. So without actually breaking anything, there we go, this is what I've come up with. So my LM342N, before I forget, I'm actually running this at about 5 volts because 3.3 .3 isn't enough because I can't get to the rail-to-rail -rail voltage on this because it's not a rail-to-rail -rail output. So I'm driving it with 5 volts. I've got the same cap. In fact, I actually unsoldered those Talium caps, Talium, I can't say the word right, caps from the circuit board. You can see them both there, the one hiding under that resistor. I actually took them right off of this board, extracted them right off this guy, and I'm using them because I didn't have any on hand. So those are tally, tally, Talium, I just can't say it right right now for some reason. Anyway, um, those both are the exact same. This is the same resistance. Um, I changed these ever so slightly to the measured values, but they seem to be pretty good. And these were 20 and I have 33 because that's just what I have on hand. And this circuit actually works. So as you can see, when I adjust this, you can see our output. It's just starting to crawl and we're running. And then obviously I can boost it up and it works. So basically, um, I'm not 100% sure, but from my understanding, this is very similar, not exact, but similar to the way that you would actually connect a purchased um, digital potentiometer. It's very similar in the circuitry. So the one thing that I don't actually have written here, which I just realized while looking, is I had to add a resistor on the output that is a 1K. I might be able to put a larger value resistor here, but I did have to actually put a resistor on the output. So I'm using the input. The interesting thing is 
if I adjust these values, I could probably get the same result. Where at about 2.1 volts, I get my maximum 3 volt output when driving this at 5 volt. Now I found that interesting because if I adjust these values probably more closely to what they have because I don't have the exact um, same numbers because I didn't have the same resistors and this may actually be measured a little off and so forth and so on. The op amp is different. I actually can drive this right about the same voltage and I'll get maximum or close to maximum output. So that's interesting to me. Um, so I'm guessing that I could actually do the same thing. Now right now I have the software set up to deliver a full maximum output. I'm going to go back and recalibrate that slightly and just rescale what I'm about to show you with the software. So that's the circuit. Okay, it's pretty straightforward. It's actually just a few resistors and an op amp um, and a few capacitors and it seems to work really nicely. So again, the yellow on my oscilloscope right now. Let's get you a shot. There you go. So the voltage here, the yellow, that is what I'm driving on the input. And then the blue voltage up here, this is what's going out to the output. So I don't want to run it at full speed because I'm afraid it's going to fall off and come flying at me and crash everything in here and that would really be neat only if I cut it on film but I don't want to do that so the next thing we're going to dive into is the software so I have the beagle bone here okay I have the app running this is the real voltage and real current let's see what it's drawing on the current I never even watched this yet there you go That is really loud. And the brakes are working nicely, by the way, just FYI. So yeah, so you can see the current coming out, the kilowatts being calculated, voltage dropping, state of charge. I don't think it moved because it's kind of an average, but anyway, cool. So that's actually functioning properly. That uh, data comes in from my USB port. Did I show you guys that? Yeah, I think I did. I added a USB port, which isn't actually USB. It's just the data coming out. It is 5 volts, so you could probably plug a USB in there without breaking it. Anyway, um, so I have two extra lines. I'm only using two, so I still have the power and ground that I could do something with, which I probably will be later, um, which is running the actual BMS, but we'll talk about that another day. Um, so, yeah, I've got that connected. That's my RS-232 connection right now, and then I'm putting that into uh, the Beagle Bone. I'm reading the data, as we all have seen in the past. If you want to see that, go watch an older video. But here, this is my analog output. So now what we're going to do is we're going to disconnect the power supply and we're going to connect up this, which is connected to my throttle. Okay, And we're going to see if that works. I actually haven't even tested this yet, but I'm fairly confident it'll work just fine because I've tested it all right here. So let's go ahead and jump over and work on that. Then I'll show you what actually the software is actually doing behind the scenes. After a little finagling, I figured out that I had to ground the battery ground to the bike to my circuit or it wouldn't reset, so whatever. That's fine. So here's my throttle. Should probably set something on it. Stay. So here we go. Just a light little give. There you go. Now, I'm going to stop my program and I'm going to activate wifey mode. Let's see, wifey mode is doo -doo -doo -doo, number three. So if I set wifey mode to three and hit run, we'll see if anything happens. I don't know. Nope, nothing happens because I don't have it high. I don't have it high enough. <laughs> That's funny. 
it's ramping slowly but it stops too low so let me adjust the maximum output for wifey mode wifey mode's output so low and this is what I gotta calibrate still that it doesn't even run that's pretty funny so we're gonna ch we're gonna change right now I had the maximum to 10 let's change the maximum to I don't know 30 that's percent so 30 percent of my output and I'm gonna ramp it up a little faster now let's try it thirty percent's a little high let's go back down to like twenty percent run that So there you go, I'm maxed out. Now I don't have the low end calibrated here, so it's, it's, uh, yeah, it's, I need to do that. But, let's speed up the uh, ramp to a little bit faster. So there you go, it is actually working. So wifey mode will only allow her to go slow, that's it. Won't go any faster. So when I do some final calibrations, I'll get that all set up so there's no delay on the beginning of the throttle. Now, if I go in here and change back to the mode that I have, set up as efficiency mode, Okay, which I actually haven't run yet. Let's see how it runs. So here, I changed it to efficiency mode. Now it's going to ramp up real slow, even if I throttle it full. So here we go. So it's working. That's really loud. So as you can tell, I can throttle it full and nothing even happens. But if I throttle it and hold it, it's ramping nice and slow. So it, it appears my low end isn't quite right with my throttle. As you can tell, there's a big delay before it starts ramping. Um, but successfully it is working. So this is wonderful news. So let me get you some little better details here. I'll show you what I'm doing. Okay, so I have a few different modes of operation right now. One is straight through, which means whatever I do here goes straight to the output. Realistically, there's some minute delay in there because of the processing, but it's pretty well real time. Now the controller itself has a 1.5 second ramp. You can't change it, it's fixed. That is a non-programmable controller, so it comes from the factory with a 1.5 volt, or sorry, 1.5 second ramp. Okay, so by the time you throttle it from zero to full, it goes zero to full as a ramp in 1.5 seconds. So as long as my throttle control is faster than that, then really I'm relying now on the, the ramp time of the motor controller. Now the second mode I had, if you guys remember in like the, where I was testing the bike, I was giving it a nice gradual throttle because I was trying to keep the current under about 80 amps all the way through the range of full max acceleration. I was able to achieve that and it worked by slowly ramping it with my hand. So what I've done is I programmed a, um, a very simple, it could change in the future but right now it works, I'm going to keep it, a very simple loop that just is a timed, timed loop. So every loop it adds 1% of my duty cycle. So if I have the time delay at one second, okay, which is a really long time. I'm not gonna actually set it like that for this example. If I have the loop in my program set at one second, then when I throttle it every one second, it will actually add 1% of duty cycle, okay? So it'll constantly just keep going and eventually it'll reach 100% 100 in 100 seconds. If I set it at 0.1, it's a 10, blah, 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 blah. You get the idea, okay? 
So that's how I'm actually doing the ramp right now. Um, it, it's, it works. It's very, very, very rudimentary and crude. I do not have a ramp generator built on here or anything like that, so it's just a nice timed ramp. Um, I think that's probably fine for what I'm doing. And then on the, the ramp down, I'm ramping up slowly and I'm ramping down not quite as slow, but I am ramping down at a timed value as well. So if I ramp up every one second per um, duty cycle, zero to 100, I may ramp down tw uh, like 10, 10 times that fast or something. So then what I'm doing is, and I'll show you this on the oscilloscope, I'm throttling it, okay? So I'm bang, so the throttle is just gonna go bang. But the ramp will be nice and slow on the output. And then if I throttle it down, it'll be kind of like throttled down as a ramp. And if I throttle back up, it'll throttle it up nice and slow at that ramp. Throttle it down, it'll kind of throttle down. Now if I let it go to zero, it will automatically drop to zero. That way there's no ramp down at all when you throttle completely off, okay? So I'm gonna actually show you that on the oscilloscope. Then what I also wanted to do was not allow the motor controller to go to full speed. Okay, so I wanted to go to 98% maximum speed. So I have an efficiency mode, a straight through mode, and then I have the efficiency mode with a non-maximum potential. I have all those pre-programmed. Then I have wifey mode. What's wifey mode do? Well, as you saw, you can throttle it full open. It only goes like three or five miles an hour. It allows my wife to be able to drive this. She can drive this stuff probably just fine, but it kind of scares her to do so. So I'm, I'm taming the beast and, uh, and then she can actually ride it. And it would be actually pretty fun for her to ride. It'd be like a little toy, not something you'd actually use. Um, but for her, it's perfect. So let me set up the oscilloscope and the channels and actually show you I'm not going to have the bike run and it's too loud. I'm just going to show you on the output how if you throttle it nice and easy, um, you can see that I'm jarring the throttle, but the ramp is like delayed and then zero to zero and yada yada. I think you'll really like this. So the idea is to use that on my iPad or my uh, iPhone interface and I can set the mode on there. It'll change that parameter and then uh, the bike will do as I say on the fly on the touchscreen. So that's pretty cool. Um, so let me set that up so we can actually see what's going on. Okay, so you're seeing the oscilloscope, and before I show you the input versus output, I'm going to show you the output of the pulse width modulated um, circuit that is coming from the actual beagle bone and the actual smooth ramp coming out of the op amp. So on my oscilloscope, I have channels 1 and 2, which is yellow and blue. The yellow channel, okay is actually the pulse width modulated uh, signal coming from my beagle bone and the blue is the smooth op amp so I'm gonna throttle this thing to max and I have a nice slow ramp what you're gonna see is this right here so I do not have any analog output pins on the beagle bone but what I do have is a pulse width modulated output. So I'm using a pulse width modulated output, okay, to actually make an analog signal using the op amp as a buffer and a smoothing action. So you can see nothing really happens on the output after a certain point. So the output stays at 3.1 and it maxes out, but I can't do anything else. I mean the duty cycle's changing but the output's not changing is what I'm trying to say. And the same thing on the low end. It seems, no, well, it's pretty good down here on the low end. It's pretty well consistent. But I'm going to change that bottom number instead of being zero. It'll be some value that the motor controller thinks is at the bottom end. So anyway, now let's switch over to the input versus output, but I wanted to show you what the actual signal looks like. But I'm going to show you the output of the op amp, not the pulse width modulated signal, just so we can make sure we see, see things accordingly. Okay, so the yellow is now my potentiometer on my throttle, my actual throttle um, handle and the blue is still the output of the op amp. So what I want you to notice right away is that this voltage, I changed this to 500 millivolts because I only am reading a very small window of voltage. It's not, the, the analog output is 1.8 volts. 
or I should say the analog voltage for the feedback is only 1.8 volts. But now, as I said before in my other video, my potentiometer is not quite right. What I mean by that is, is I can't get down to 0 ohms or 5k uh, ohms. I'm, I'm in some immediate range, and that's why you see what you see. So my minimum value is there. My maximum value on the yellow on the output on the on the input is there. Now I'm on straight through mode. So what you can see is what comes in goes out pretty well exactly. Okay. So the yellow is me throttling it up, throttling it back down, up, down. I can do it nice and slow. Okay, or I can do it a little faster. But what you get is what you get. It's pretty well straight through. So I'm going to now put it in efficiency mode. So I'm going to change this value. I'm going to run it again. There we go. Okay, now it's running. Now look what's happening. Okay, I'm going to actually make this even slower so we can see it. So there's the yellow. I throttle it to the max, but now there's this nice ramp. Now if I let go of the throttle, they both go to zero. But if I throttle down instead of letting go of the throttle back to zero, look what happens. Okay, we're going up. Now watch, I'm going to throttle it down, but not all the way to zero. You see how it ramped down? So there's a delay on the ramp down, and there's a delay on the ramp up. Okay, if I go to zero, again, we're at zero. So this is efficiency mode. Efficiency mode literally takes my commanded inputs and smooths them out. If you, if you have a gas car that has efficiency mode, this is what it's doing. It's taking your input, and it's modifying it to, to make the vehicle efficient by not allowing you to throttle to the maximum. Okay, so I didn't actually throttle to zero there. Now I think if we watch it, it flickers when it's not maxed out. Let's see what it does here. Yeah, see this jitter on the output? It may not matter, but I know what's happening there. My counter's going up and resetting down one and counting up and going down one, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down. <laughs> I probably should fix that. But this is efficiency mode. So if I hold it to the max, we can see we get up to our maximum output voltage. But in efficiency mode without, without max, it basically brings it up not going to full. Now if I stop this and I put it into wifey mode, now what we're going to see, okay, now we're in wifey mode. So I'm going to full throttle, bang, and that's it. So it, it maxes out and it has a nice slow ramp, okay? Now you can still, you can still control the throttle with the, the input, see how nice and smooth together? But if I bang it full on, like she may accidentally do, any people who don't ride these very often, they just bang on and go into the wall. Makes for a great video, but not really a good cleanup, especially if it's your wife. Anyway, that's wifey mode, okay? So it seems to work pretty well. I'm going to go to uh, efficiency not full mode and just see what happens here. So this is efficiency not full mode. And let's see where it actually stops at. I, I have to calibrate this still. Yeah, so it's still maxing out because I need to calibrate the actual op amp circuit to what I'm really wanting to see on the output. So there's some adjustments to be made, to be made there on my side on the programming, but yeah, that's cool. It does actually work. So let me show you the program real quick. You can get an idea of what it really looks like. All right, let's go some more real estate here. So this may make sense to some of you, and some of you, you may not have a clue. I'm up to 407 lines of code. I'm using Python on the BeagleBone. I'm going to stop this. So, we basically import a bunch of things that we need to make this operate. Then I start a, a thread. I'm multi... I'm, it's actually a process. I'm multi-processing. So first of all, thanks to uh, my friend Richard, who uh, actually has been working on a separate project with me, and we've been learning together, but he taught me a lot of what I'm going to show you, per se, and then I just put it up to, to actual application. I did write this whole thing myself, 
and got it all working. Um, which is which is cool, but the the point of me talking about that is that you do need some people around you sometimes to help you out. So thank you, Richard, for helping me figure some things out. So this whole first part is throttle control. Okay, and this whole second part is some of the code written from Peer Talk. So some of this I didn't write, but some of it I did modify and edit. Like here I'm sending the packet data over to my iPhone. And then here I'm actually uncoding the data and putting it into the actual values and doing a voltage total value. So I'm decoding the data on the iPhone and actually putting the work in the iPhone to process that and I'm also processing it here locally because what I plan on doing is saying oh sorry um, I'm gonna turn off the motor control now because your voltage is too low so it's it's a way to control the motor and do safety shutdowns without actually turning anything off and then I do have another relay that powers down the solenoid for that and I I gotta build that whole circuit and all this fun stuff that's for another video so it's pretty simple um, I just set up the um, uh, a few variables set up the the input for the um, analog input I set up the PWM output those are the two pens I'm using um, I might be able to zoom in here a little closer but we're gonna cut some things off but that's fine how about that try to keep you in the frame so here I'm doing the analog in and the PWM out it's the only two pens I'm using right now on the beagle bone then here I'm starting the PWM, telling it what frequency to run at, um, the duty cycle to start out at, and uh, I'm setting this value as the actual output, which is zero. Anyway, this sets that up. I'm not 100% on, on all everything, but I got it work, and that's what's important right now. Still learning. Put some variables in here. Um, Oh, yeah, so my throw con my throttle control type, um, the array is now somewhere else, but that's where it's at. And that just labels everything. But yeah, I'm uh, reading the value. I'm printing a bunch of stuff for now. I'll delete all that later. Um, so I'm reading the value, and then I'm I'm scaling it right here. I'm scaling the input. So I'm taking that voltage that's not zero and that's not 1.8, but it's somewhere in between there. We can actually look at exactly what it is. If I undo this then this will slow down our our code and I'm gonna run it and what you're actually gonna see down here okay is the data coming through so I'm going to just stop this so I can actually read it so right here the uh, potentiometer value from uh, voltage is 0.4 so I'm not at zero and the value from 0 to 1 is actually 0.2 and if I continue to run this and I throttle it maxed out and then stop it you'll see my max voltage is only 1.3 out of my 1.8 which is 0.6 so in my code up here this section of code actually scales that so it, it gets rid of the the de it's basically the um, the dead, the uh, the dead band, if you will. I'm, re I'm removing the dead band, the top and the bottom. I'm I'm calibrating or scaling my input to match my output, and then I'll redo this to make it work even better. Once I get my op amp circuit finalized, I'll calibrate this and I'll calibrate my minimum output. And then here, this is basically a straight through. So if the mode is zero, motor duty cycle equals throttle analog dB, which is my um, my duty cycle sets exactly to whatever my analog input is that I'm scaling and then that uses the motor duty cycle to write to the output pin on the PWM it's super simple it's three lines in fact it's actually two if you were just to go straight through but I have if throttle mode and then if throttle mode equals one do something two do something three do something and these are my different modes so it's very simple what I'm doing. I'm just doing this is probably a way better way to do this, but this works and I'm happy with it. So for now, until I write it and test it and find out how it actually rides, like if there's some weird things happening with the actual throttle and I can feel it, then I may have to modify this slightly. But I'm just adding, just adding my duty cycle to do my ramp. 
and I'm using this delay where is it sleep time right here to actually define the ramp time so that is the ramp time so I can change this slower or faster and get a different ramp time in fact uh, this is the ramp up this is the ramp down so ramping up I have 0.08 of a second and ramping down I have 0.02 so that's why you saw the throttle go up and then drop faster and then go up slow and then drop faster and then when I do zero zero it goes to zero and it won't allow it to go over a hundred or the program will crash now here's something interesting if you write a value above a hundred or below zero to the PWM output it will crash and the program will the PWM pin will stay wherever it was so if I crash it at full speed the bike will just continue to run full speed and that's bad so what I've done is like I set up here I've started a process okay right here I've started a process and then down here I've started another process to do the um, stuff for the iPhone so if I wanted the iPhone to do something and if I pull the cable out, it'll crash the program right now because I don't have any safety set up. But the throttle control will still run. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set up a watchdog that says, hey, if you ever see this program crash, write a PWM value of zero into the beagle bone and then exit. And that will be assure and or I could actually turn the whole bike off um, as well. I could disable the outputs because I will have relays turning on and off the motor controller itself so I could I could write a value out to the zero for PWM and turn it off or just turn it off or whatever but it, I gotta put a watchdog timer in there because if I'm throttling this sucker and it sticks open because the program crashes because I didn't find a bug that happened only once yeah that could be bad so I will have to add a watchdog for this um, anyway then the other ones just do different things wifey mode only allows me go up to 20 percent duty cycle um, here's my the one we were just at is uh, is um, efficiency mode it'll go all the way up to a hundred efficiency mode not max will only go to 89 which I need to tweak that apparently it didn't work when we tested it and then down here I have another couple of modes well one right now that I want to put in here which is um, I want to use the average amps coming from the BMS to actually throttle down my control automatically to keep it at or below some value. In this case, 80 amps seems reasonable, but I can actually do current max control. So instead of doing some number, it's literally reading the battery voltage, current, uh, watt hours, whatever you want it to do, and you can control the output of the throttle. So even if you're giving it full throttle, it says, sorry, dude, I can only go to 80 amps, so I'm going to throttle you back down. Now the problem with doing this is I only get data coming from the BMS like every once in a while. It's not real time. Well, it's, it's real time, but you only update it like every half a second or quarter of a second. It's really bad. So this doesn't really work unless I do some averaging. And then, uh, and then even it'll it'll spike out. It won't do. It won't be real feedback. But what I could do is actually hook up the uh, very small voltage coming from the um, uh, shunt on the battery management system. Just directly connect the shunt to my beagle bone. Then I'll have real time data, or as real as the program will run a cycle. So anyway, this stuff down here is just a bunch of gibberish. This is the rest of the code I wrote a long time ago when I showed you the data coming through on my iPhone and it working. And then here, I set up all these variables in shared memory. Um, a little too close there. I set up all these variables in shared memory. And then when you start two processes, you can share the memory back and forth. So when you write a value from one process, like the motor control, it'll write over to the BMS. Um, or I should say the iPhone control back and forth blah 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 there's just there's a lot going on here I just kinda wanted to let you sort of see so here I start process one and two and then join them together to get them to run together so they don't just run once but they continuously loop so yeah that's my program it's uh, actually pretty straightforward but it took me a while to write because I really never you know developed a program from scratch 
and uh, made it work to this extent. So this is this is exciting for me. I, I am uh, enjoying the the learning aspect of this, but I'm not enjoying the frustration aspect of this. So there you go. There's the code. Huh? I was old, man. That is bad. Okay. Well, there you go. Um, now you know everything I know. I've actually put a lot of work and effort into this, as you can see, and I'm having fun doing it. I don't know how much time I can put into this in the next uh, week or two. I got a few other tasks that I got to prioritize, but I'm pretty excited. I I took basically falling over. I took basically this, used it as a reference point, kind of figured out how the circuit was was configured and then went about it with just an op amp that I had in my actual um, arsenal of crap, which is, uh, which is actually what you see sitting right there on my bench. All that crapola. And I was able to get it work. Actually, I got it to work time first out, which was pretty dang cool. Um, the software took me a while to write, but, um, uh, but I succeeded. And it seems to work just fine doing a uh, count up, count down loop with a time a wait time in there it seems fine now if the steps are too great I may have to figure that out by either smoothing the output with a bigger capacitor or whatever we'll figure that out when we when we need to um, right now the thing actually goes count up count down count up count down I put something in there to say if this throttle equals my output just don't move but I think I have to add a window in there of like one or two percent instead of just 1% because it's going one up, one down, one up, one down. And even though I have the code in there, it doesn't actually stay flat. Like it doesn't stay input equals output. So I'll figure that out. But anyway, I'm getting pretty tired. This was actually a very long video. I may bro I may, I may, I may break it up into two sections, but um, I don't know, it gives you guys something to watch. So hope you're staying safe out there, staying quarantined, being smart. Um, just if you go out and have to get groceries or something, you know, if you put a mask on, anything like a cloth mask or just any anything to cover your face, uh, it's more about you not touching something and then your face rather than you breathing in particles from somebody close to you. So if somebody in front of you touch something and you touch it and then scratch your face, you're pretty well doomed. But if you can keep your hands off your off your face, you by wearing a mask and then washing your hands when you need to, that, that'll actually be a huge benefit for you, and I've been doing that. So hopefully you guys are staying safe out there, and uh, it's crazy. Um, anyway, God bless you guys. Thank you very much. It is Easter weekend, so happy Easter to you, and God bless you guys. It's a wonderful time of year, and uh, super excited. We're going to go celebrate and maybe go to the local park. Uh, the local park is actually a community park just for our neighborhood and throw some eggs out in the grass if no one's el no one's over there. And uh, do a little Easter egg hunt with the kids. So, peace and love. We'll talk to you later. Hope you, uh, I hope you actually learned something. Uh, I've been kind of just running through what I'm doing because I don't have time to sit down and go through it uh, as an educational thing. But um, this time I tried to do that a little bit more, so hopefully you got a little bit more out of it. Granted, the video is probably 40 minutes, but you get what you get. So see you later. Thanks for watching. Exciting. I'm really excited. I got a lot of other work to do. I actually wrote, uh, let's see, where is it? This right here. All right, this is what I want the control system to do. And I started a clean slate on what I'm going to actually draw up for my next step. It'll have all the controls and airlocks and boot the thing up and by the way it takes about uh, takes about 10 seconds, 10 to 12 seconds to beat to boot the beagle bone and then I have a delay to connect to everything for about another 10 seconds. So it takes about uh, 20 to 30 seconds for the bike when I'm done with this for the bike to be on to where it's actually functional. And 30 seconds sounds like a long time, but it's not too bad. However, apparently you can remove a bunch of uh, extra processes and get the thing to boot up in even down to a second. So there is potential there that I can really boot it up way faster, and we'll get to that in another video. I'm out. See you guys. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye. Have a good night. Woo. Vroom, vroom. Vroomity broom broom. Vroomity broom broom. I'm gonna put
put this back on direct. Oh yeah, yeah. Fire me up. Where's my cord? I gotta plug the throttle control back in before I turn this on. Let's see if it still works. Nope. Something very weird happening here. I have to figure out. But I'll figure it out. Eventually. Hmm. Very odds going on. Well, that was a lot of fun. Okay, so, yeah, as I said, my name's Russ, what's up? Um, I guess I should say, what's up, everybody? I feel like I have something stuck in my mouth. I do have a hair. <laughs> Disgusting. Let's start over.